Now in the opening, you heard me playing a bit of a solo by Guido Basso. The tune is Portrait of Jenny, and it was recorded on the Jazz Album by Rob McConnell and the Boss Brass. I transcribed that solo 40 years ago, and I can still sing every note of it. Not that you'd want to hear me do that. But today, I'm using him as an example to kick off a series on solo transcription. Now, opinions abound on this topic. Is it a good idea? Is it essential? Will it turn you into a copycat? Should you write the solos down or just memorize them? Well, as with everything on this channel, what you're going to get is my opinion. And my opinion on these four questions is yes, yes, no, and probably. Or I might revise that to yes, maybe, no, and probably. Is it a good idea? Yes, I think it's a good idea. Is it essential? Well, for me, it was. If you ask me how I learned to improvise, that's what I point to, and I don't know any other way to learn what I learned from it. But some accomplished jazz musicians say they never transcribe, so I guess we can't say that it's essential. However, I've never known a student who didn't benefit from it, and greatly so. If a student can closely replicate a solo, or better yet, a hundred of them, then I'm confident that she's learning the language. And by that, I don't just mean the notes. I'm talking about inflections, time feel, tone quality, articulation, vibrato. These are things that can't be notated. In other words, we can't see them with our eyes. We can only hear them with our ears. And that gets to the essence of solo transcription, which is essentially intensive listening. Described that way, I don't really think many people would argue. Now, as to the question of whether it will make you a copycat and whether you should write them down, I'll get to those in just a minute. But let's identify two main components of solo transcription, the input stage and the output stage. The input stage is when you listen and figure out what you're hearing. The output stage is what you do with the solo after you've transcribed it. Now, the main thing you're trying to figure out during the input stage are the notes and the rhythms. And actually, once you've got the notes, you've pretty much got the rhythms, at least as far as hearing them. Notating them, that's another question. In the process of figuring out what notes were played, you also hear how they were played and the context in which they were played. For example, the note C is just a C, but it functions very differently depending on the chord. When you transcribe a solo, you hear the way the notes relate to the chords, even if you don't know what the chords are. Now when the process is reversed and you hear a chord, your ear is more likely to suggest notes that would sound good played with it. Now this goes to two essential abilities that every jazz musician must possess. The ability to play what you hear, and the ability to hear something worth playing. Solo transcription develops both of those abilities. Now the speed and the accuracy with which you can transcribe varies greatly from person to person. Somebody with perfect pitch may be able to figure out the notes in one pass, depending on how fast and complex the music is and how fine-tuned their sense of pitch is. For somebody without perfect pitch, like me, it can be a laborious process, especially in the beginning. I had to listen over and over and over again just to figure out a few notes at a time, and that was with a tone arm on a record player. Now, eventually I got faster because I started to recognize common patterns, just as you can understand someone speaking English, even if I speak fast. And you can repeat back the gist of a sentence without having to memorize the exact words. So as you become familiar with the musical language, your ears may be able to recognize groups of notes rather than having to figure out each one individually. Now even so, I still can't transcribe a solo without repeated listening and with my trumpet in my hand. My ears just aren't that good. The thing is, though, that this is not necessarily a bad thing. Even if you're able to fairly quickly figure out what notes you're hearing, there's a lot more information to be gleaned from repeated listening. And I think some students with perfect pitch miss out on that. They acquire vocabulary quicker than others, but it sometimes sounds like something's missing, like it came to them too easily, or that the music's not embedded deeply enough. Now, of course, this is by no means a universal statement. There are some great musicians with perfect pitch. And when you've got everything else, including work ethic, perfect pitch is an incredible gift. I've never met anyone who would choose to give it up, although they can often pinpoint disadvantages if I ask them, which I do. Now, a piece of music reveals new things each time you listen to it, just like a movie does when you watch it more than once. This is something that's gotten a bit lost in an era when there's so much music available on demand, not like when you bought a new record and practically wore it out, especially if you were transcribing. I have digital recordings made from my records, and when I listen to solos I transcribe, man, the sound is scratchy beyond recognition. Now I admit, I sound like an old guy talking, but it's not lost on my students. I've known some who put just one album on their phone to force repeated listening. Of course, even this is not surefire with streaming and YouTube and a million other potential sources of distraction. But the point is that people who are serious about learning to play music realize that it's going to take a deep dive. When I was in university, and then for a few years afterwards, I transcribed an hour a day, pretty much every day. I considered it part of my practice routine. In the beginning, I was lousy at it. 
After about a year or two, I went back and looked at solos I'd started with. The first solo I ever transcribed was Chuck Mangione playing Mania de Carnaval on this 1972 album. Now, after a period of steady transcription, I could immediately hear all sorts of mistakes that I'd made in my first attempts. It was actually pretty revelatory. It proved that I was learning the language. At first, I only worried about transcribing the notes. I didn't try to lift chord changes, and I couldn't, really. But as I learned the melodic language, the harmonic language was seeping in. During that period, if I was trying to learn a tune, it was essential that I transcribe a solo on it. That gave me insight into the harmony that I couldn't get from just listening to or looking at chord changes. So I learned to hear harmony by studying melody, and it's still the way I approach it. 